Hello and welcome to a bit of a messing about video. So today I just wanted to sort of learn something about my drum filters I guess. So let's start with the fry tank. So here we've got a thousand dish fry, somewhere like that. Quite a lot of fish in this tank. It's a smallish tank. They're eating a lot. As you can see I took quite a lot of food in this tank. And they eat it within no time at all. As the fish are getting bigger and I'm putting more food in and more food in, they're producing an enormous amount of waste. And even my drum filters are struggling to sort of cope with it. Well, I say struggling to cope with it, it's more of, it's like a sticky, weird substance that they produce. And it coats everything, the pipe work, the bottom drain, so the bottom drain sort of blocking up because it's only a two inch drain on this tank and it's sort of blocking inside the filter room and stuff like that so I want to try something with the booster pumps today in fact we'll have a look at this tank first and I'll show you what I mean by the muck in it so if we look down here it's actually quite mucky I'll put the torch down there that's, that's the sort of muck that you get from the fry and uh, it sort of builds up and lines all the pipe where you can see it in that tray there and it also, for some reason, I can't quite sort of work out. It sort of lines the drum filter as well. For a, uh, so this is the clean side of the drum filter, so there shouldn't be any muck on it at all. The spray bar's working fine. It's just this stuff is that sticky. It doesn't really spray off. And every what I, basically all I'm doing is every two, three weeks, something like that, two weeks probably. I'm just going over it with pressure washer, so it's just rotate the drum a full turn, pressure wash it quickly, and just blast pressure washer down there, let the drum do a few cycles and it's clean. So it's not too difficult to do, but I wanted to see if I could get it to do it itself, so basically, when that's shut, we run the booster pump, and the booster pump can do, what have we got here, 40 psi which is almost three bar right there so I put these little gauges on them so that I could see where the spray bar were blocking up or the pump were reducing in power and I also just was curious to know what sort of pressure you could get from these filters and the main pond's also got one if I run that it should be very similar that was slightly more I'd say but that could be just an inaccuracy in the gauges themselves um, so yeah, we've got a 3 bar pump, 40 psi, so I'm thinking about changing that pump to see if I can get more from it. So let's just have a look. You see now that it's come to an even muckier section, so this should have all come off and been clean. And for some reason this bit stays clear, I think it's because the UV light is just here and the UV light st stops here. And uh, I've turned it off so I can open the lid. And obviously the UV light must do something to this that breaks it down a bit so that the jet wash can take it off quite easily because all these spray bars spray at the same pressure if you put your hand in so let's have a look at the pumps so here we are in the basement this is actually the main pond's booster pump uh, but it's easier to look at so this pump is about 800 watts I believe I'll uh, be able to tell a bit easier when I get one out the uh, writing's on the top here. So it's about 800 watts and I think something like 48 meter head height. So basically all I need to do is put a more powerful one of these on and see how we get on. And I do have a more powerful one of these. This one. So this one I've actually been using for a bit. I've been using it to sort of run hose pipe and water plants and stuff like that um, with old pond water which is why it's got the one inch inlet and a hose pipe connector on the outlet and I've noticed it's actually ridiculously powerful more powerful than my other 800 watt one so this one's actually 1.1 kilowatt it still says it's got a 50 meter maximum head height so it shouldn't be too much different from the other ones but it does seem to be higher pressure and uh, obviously we'll see how we go what it might actually be is higher volume um, which will also increase the pressure so we'll see about that and hopefully it might clear it off 
So we've got 1.1 kilowatt, 50 meters maximum head, and 60 liters a minute pumping rate. So we'll see how we get on with this one. Basically, I'm just trying it. They're not expensive pumps. I think I paid like 40 quid for this one, something like that. And uh, so let's see how we get on. So here we have the pump I'm actually going to be replacing. I just need to remove this air pump and this battery so that we've got plenty of room to work here. But we've got a one inch inlet for a flexible hose that tees off of the pump. So here there's a T junction. This bit comes to the booster pump for the drum and then this bit goes to the water pump for the pond there. Um, and then this goes back to the drum spray bar. So let's get the new pump in. So here we are with the old pump and the new pump's uh, lid. So I can compare the specifications of the two pumps. So the old pump is 780 watts, the new pump is 1100. So I'm thinking that that might actually produce a higher pressure or more water volume. Mostly because neither of these pumps are actually uh, built to be economical or anything like that. So I doubt this one would be exactly the same. But let's have a look at the other specifications. So we've got a 50 meter maximum head height on this one, on the new one, and a 48 meter maximum head height on the old one. So only two meters extra sort of pressure, uh, which is not much, but we'll see, see I guess. Flow rate, we've got 55 liters a minute, and then the new one 60 liters a minute. So again, not much. Uh, difference. The biggest difference obviously power consumption uh, which has its own disadvantages obviously they're not on long enough to ever use any electricity they only come on for a few for 30 seconds every I don't know 20 minutes or something like that so any extra electricity is not a problem however I do have a backup generator that will uh, probably complain about that if power goes out uh, so th <coughs> there's not too much difference in the two pumps, just one uses quite a bit more power than the other one. So basically it's just going to be seeing what happens I guess. So I've put the new one up here, there we go, I need to put the lid on it obviously. Uh, water to it, water from it, and everything's tight, hopefully it don't leak, and we'll just see how we go. So let's get water to it and see if it can uh, generate more pressure than the other one could. So the drum filter's currently empty, as you can see, I've left it mucky, normally I'd just get a quick wash down, it'll take a second, but I've left it mucky so that I can see if this screen cleans up here with the new drum. So what I need to do now is let the water in, I don't know whether to let it in slowly or just let it fly in. I think I might just let it fly in and at least it'll purge the system a little bit and give the drum a little bit more to work on. So, if I can get to my tap. Bit cramped in here. There we go. That's that tap open. And the water flowing into the drum filter. Which you probably can't see because it's dark in there. There we go. That's the water flowing in. And then it should be going down towards the drum. It is. It's kicking out a bit of muck as well. So, what I'll do is on this drum filter. I've got a bypass for the pump right here so the pump can just pump around the drum filter from outlet to inlet and avoid pumping the muck into the uh, pump into the pond should I say so I'll let that fill up a little bit see if we're leaking downstairs so we're full of water no leaks as of yet, but uh, we'll see when we get under pressure how things get on. Right, let's go and try it. So we've filled up enough. Should be alright, the drum's actually probably blocked quite a bit. So let's just turn around and see what pressure we get. Ooh, a little bit more. We're getting three and a half bar now. Well, that's good, at least it's more pressure. Only half a bar. But it's there, can't complain. So the other one we're getting just below 3 bar, which is 40 psi. And uh, this one's giving 
it's a bit more. So it's still mucky, in fact it's uh, worse, but however I've just kicked a load of muck through from the uh, drum filter. Uh, so, you never know, it might be over time that extra half a bar of pressure might just keep it a little bit slightly cleaner. So, it's half a bar, were it worth doing? I doubt it. But I've done it, and I think I might stick with it for a little while and see how we get on. So here we are with the pump in the basement, so it's actually been running for a minute or two now and run a few times, it's not leaking at all, so I'm quite pleased with that. And it's As you can see, it's not too noisy, or not any noisier than the other pumps, I'm quite pleased with that. Um, yeah, I think I'll leave it on. Don't think it make, don't know if it makes an awful lot of difference, that half a bar, but it's there, we'll see. And uh, actually, one other thing you can do is you can increase the timing on these drum filters, so this one runs for, in fact, I'm not sure how long it runs for, but I think it's supposed to run for about 20 seconds, something like that. You can increase it to a minute, 10 minutes if you want. Um, obviously that's a bit too long but I could increase it to something like 30 seconds that might do a better clean of the drum so that might be an idea if I still keep having the trouble with that uh, muck settling on the filter but yeah quite pleased with this little pump let's see how she runs for a bit leave it to it so I've had the pressure washer on and get it a bit of pressure washer on and as you can see the drums nice and clean now it's really easy to do all you basically do is you know, rotate the drum a full circle and just move your pressure washer across fronting it like that, keeping it about six to eight inches away because it's you know a little bit powerful. You don't want to uh, cut this; it's only like plastic. Uh, I have actually got a bigger pressure washer than that one, and that one will just rip this straight in half. Uh, so I keep the little one just for this job specifically. And as you can see, it's all nice and clean in there. Basically, just put the nozzle in, put the jet in, and just blast it around. And you can see the water is running around the drum. So it's basically pumping out of this side and pumping back in at this side. It's not even going into the pond. And then it just runs clean. And then that was, so I've got my little air bubbler back on there. Let's put my air bubbler back on. Just to keep this side stirred up. Is it blocked up? I think the air blower is blocked up. I'll have to clean it. How can it be blocked? So once this fills back up, so I've got the uh, I've got the pond filling up. Drain them a little bit because I've been uh, well, I drain the drum filter. Uh, twice after pressure washing it, so it's filling up, and then uh, I can put the pump back running through this circuit back into the pan. Not bad at face, it's still hungry as ever. So I won't be putting a more powerful pump on my main pond's drum filter because it just doesn't need it. I have no problem with that cleaning cycle. I never pressure wash this particular drum. I pressure wash that one particularly because the fry just produced that much waste. Um, so I'm leaving that one as it is because the extra half a bar is not going to make any difference and we'll see how it goes with that one. If you like this video then please like it. If you want to see more videos like this then please feel free to subscribe. If you have any questions or comments please put them down below and I shall see you in the next video. Thank you for watching.